Hi, Jeff Spira here again, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to build a Hatteras V-bottom dory. The Hatteras is one of my uh, most popular boats, and it, uh, it's been around for quite some time, and they've, uh, there's, oh, I don't know, there's probably been 50 or so built, uh, and it's a good choice for many people who want to use the boat in lakes and rivers and bays and also for taking it offshore. This is one of the first ones designed. This one is uh, actually built in New Zealand. You can see he's got a big crew on it and they're out fishing in the ocean. Here's one that's used for family fun. It, uh, it works well on lakes and uh, rivers, and, uh, and it's based in the Midwest of the U.S. This one is, uh, was built in the South, and it's used um, a lot in the, uh, the Gulf Coast and the rivers and bays uh, in shallow water areas of the South. Here's one that's used a lot in the oceans in Southern California. It's actually based in Santa Barbara, and uh, the guy takes it out to the Channel Islands uh, across the Santa Barbara Channel, which is, um, you know, pretty open uh, stretch of water, and it's um, it can be dangerous at times. It uh, it can blow well up there, uh, blow pretty good, and uh, a lot of storms and. Uh, that sort of thing. A lot of big ships have gone down in that area. Um, and it's uh, quite deep as it crosses. Uh, it's about 35 miles out to sea from Santa Barbara to uh, Santa Cruz Island, Santa Rosa Island. There are a series of islands out there. This one uh, is used in Hawaii. Um, the owner put a 40 horse motor on it and uses it to go offshore and uh, and troll for tuna and dorado. Well, they call mahi-mahi there. And, uh, you know, the, um, the wahoo and other offshore species that they get in Hawaii. Here's one that's run in the North Atlantic. Uh, it's really Prince Edward Island in the Canadian Maritimes. The owners had it for I think five or seven years or something like that. Still loves it, still uses it every day, gets all kinds of comments. Uh, it's a really, he really did a beautiful job on it. Here's one in South Carolina. This uh, builder uses his in the bays there and also takes it uh, offshore uh, in the uh, Atlantic, going out to the Gulf Stream, which is 60 or 80 miles offshore. He has a great time fishing with his, uh, loves his boat, and gets a lot of comments on it, too. Uh, this is one uh, in Florida. You can see the palm trees in the background. Um, so this is uh, uh, very popular for that sort of area as well. And as this one, again, I mentioned it earlier, you saw it, it's uh, in the Midwest. You can see they're having fun there. Now, most builders um, tend to use a center console like this one. Uh, it's a really good layout in this boat. It's a, it's a big enough boat for it. There's plenty of room to get around a center console um, and, and to take people out. And they typically use it as a fishing boat. And it's a very popular uh, uh, configuration for it as opposed to having you know, thwart seats or, or other things like that. But you can also build a cabin on it. Here's one uh, that's being built in Europe uh, that has, uh, it's got uh, a forward cabin with uh, a galley and head in it, and as well as bunks. And then it's got a stand-up pilot house. This boat is capable of handling that much weight and that much uh, uh, windage, I guess. So um, it would be a popular choice for for someone who's looking to uh, build it out a bit. It's a little small at 19 feet, but it's certainly capable of, of handling that size um, 
cabin and such. Now let's talk about how to build a Hatteras. Now, like most of my boats, these uh, are built around frames. You can see each element of the frame is a, is a straight mount member. So you just need to cut out those elements. Uh, this one is laying out on um, a, a piece of white paper that's laid over a, a piece of plywood uh, as a, to be used as, a, as a, a desktop or a worktop, let's put it that way. And, um, and the various pieces are cut out in accordance with your layout and then uh, glued and screwed together. Very simple process and uses all standard size lumber. Next, you build a, a strong back. This is, serves as a jig to build the boat. It's typically a two by eight on edge uh, for this size boat. And uh, um, this, this person has elected to use uh, uh, wheels under the, under the strong back. A lot of people do. A lot of people like to put uh, casters under there so they can move it around their garage or their workspace or roll it outside, that sort of thing. Um, but this is what you're going to attach the frames to to lay the boat out on. Here the frames are located on top of the strong back. This is actually the same strong back. You can see the wheels under it uh, are the same uh, as the last uh, picture. And uh, this is out in his uh, driveway, so he can go out and work on it outside if he wishes, and then stash it in the garage when he needs the, uh, when he wants to take it out of the weather. Um, if you notice the center line of the uh, frames are cut out into um, a, a, uh, a cutout that the, uh, that the keelson will eventually lay in. I give you dimensions on how to do this before you uh, before you build it, so or after you build the frames before you lay the the um, keelson in there. Here, the keelson is laying on top of the uh, frames, and then it's glued and screwed in place. Now you can see the forward frames. The uh, cutout is actually wider than the frame itself, so. Um, the keelson will eventually get cut down uh, to make a nice uh, faired shape so that uh, it'll get put together. But uh, that's how the whole thing uh, fits together. You can see that each of the frames is uh, uh, attached to the strong back uh, at the cross member. So that's, it's all designed to fit together that way. It's a pretty simple way of building it. Next, the sides, uh, both at the base, which is uh, called the chine log, and at the, the uh, top of the sides, which is, uh, it's upside down here, so it'll be the bottom that you see, are notched, and uh, two elements are, are laying in there. The upper one, the lower one in this picture, of course, is the um, shear clamp, while the Upper one here, which is at the joint, is really called the uh, chine log. And these are going to serve as places to attach your side planking to, as well as uh, the side planking is attached to the frames as well. So, Next, what is done is the boat is what I call fared. And the way you do this is by cutting away the... Uh, the frame elements that uh, get in the way of the plywood uh, sticking to those, um, sticking to, you know, f flat to those those surfaces. So the sides of the frames and the uh, um, uh, keelson are cut away. Um, some people use, uh, you know, a saw, like in this case, some people use a plane, some use... Uh, an angle grinder. Um, I typically use a, a draw knife and a plane, uh, but I do almost everything manually. But uh, I know lots of people don't uh, like spending that much time on it. They want to they want to get the work done quickly. So power tools are always a good idea. <laughs> Here we see the boat. Um, uh, that's that's fully fared. 
the edges of the frame, the, the, the stem is, is pointed, uh, the, keels, the keelson's all cut away to, uh, m to match the, the flat uh, um, uh, ply that's going to later come along to it. So this is what it'll look like when you're ready to start covering with the ply. Now let's take a look at a video that uh, one of my uh, builders sent of building his boat so you get a, another idea of, of different views of how this is done. Okay, we're back again, and um, I want to talk to you now about how to cover your framed boat that's all been fared. Um, you begin by covering the sides, and this is done with um, with the plywood that you select. Uh, consult my uh, my uh, apply on frame construction manual for more details on which ply would be best, but. You lean the plywood up against the hull and um, and use the framing as a pattern to draw around the ply, and then you cut the ply out a little bit bigger and then glue it and screw it in place and uh, um, then trim the uh, edges so it it fits nicely. You can see there's a, a butt joint in the middle of the picture here. Actually, there's two on this side. And uh, there where two pieces of ply come together, you just simply butt them together, put a butt block on the inside, made also out of the same plywood, and then uh, glue and screw to that butt block. And then once you fill the screw holes in the, in the joint, uh, you won't even see it. You won't even know it's there. All right, next we're going to cover the bottom. Now the bottom is a little bit different. It's difficult to um, to twist the ply to get it to fit appropriately. So most builders build it in sections. Uh, this builder has got th three large sections up in the bow and then and then longer ones aft. Uh, some some builders use even more sections. I've seen. I've seen eight or ten uh, that go into building uh, something like the Hatteras here, but it's pretty simple to do. You just um, lay them uh, edge to edge, edge glue them together, and then fill the cracks between. And once it gets glassed, uh, you won't notice any decrease in strength. Then you fill uh, <clears throat> the cracks in between the ply and uh, also the screw holes. This is typically done with epoxy and you thicken it to about the consistency of peanut butter. Um, most people use just sawdust uh, out of your sander, um, but you can also use other things. There's pecan flour and silica and microspheres and other things that are used to do this. Once it's nice and smooth, you would sand it then, of course, and then you glass the bottom. You can see there's a coating of fiberglass here. The edges are rounded a little bit, and then the fiberglass is draped over the edges so that it, uh, that you get a double coating over, over each of the edges. No need to tape the edges. You can just do it with the existing fiberglass cloth. Um, again, it's cloth and epoxy is what you want to use here. Now here's the sides uh, getting fitted to go on. Um, again, you uh, you can see that uh, these are just hung in place, and then they they kind of conform to the shape of the hull. The bottom's already been glassed, but the sides have not, so the sides are are laying on there. 
uh, first, then you would uh, uh, take them off, um, paint that plywood uh, with a coat of epoxy, then lay the, the uh, cloth back down and then put epoxy on the cloth to make sure it gets filled like that. You can see it turns out clear like on the bottom when you're done. Here's the uh, fiberglass incomplete. You can see there's a there's a curly edge uh, at the bottom um, where the where the glass ends. Again, you'll just trim that off when you get done. But that's kind of what it looks like when you're done glassing. Now at this stage, you need to sand um, sand lots and get it smooth. And you can use a filling compound as well, just like you did under the ply uh, if you have some you know, lines in there or, or little creases that you want to fill or little depressions, things like that. Um, and you just keep filling it and sanding it until it's, it's the nice consistency that you expect. Then you would paint the hull. This one is, um, is the same one I've been showing you. You can tell by the uh, strongback jig with the, uh, with the casters on it. And the builder um, just painted it a nice dark blue. So then you flip the hull over and start working on the inside. Um, this builder is adding a center console. You can see here he's building it in place, um, and you start finishing all the top sides until it uh, looks like you want. You deck it and um, you know build in cabinets and um, you know sealed chambers and anchor bins and different things, however you want the boat on the insides. So. And when all that's done, you hang your motor on it. These will take anywhere between a 40 horse and a 100 horse uh, motor. Um, a lot of them run with 50s and 75s, uh, and the people are very happy with them. And some builders like a little more, so 75 to a 90 is 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 a more preferred sort of way. Um, and then that would just be uh, typically a you know standard shaft, 20 inch shaft motor would go on there. And when that's all done, you back it up and throw it in the water and go for a ride. <laughs> And that's what it takes to build a Hatteras. Also, please do subscribe to this uh, uh, YouTube channel and, um, and hit the bell so that you get notified of new uh, videos that are posted. Um, if you're interested in any of my boats, uh, please go by my website uh, and it's got uh, um, Lots of great stuff on there. Uh, it also has an insider section where I've got additional uh, information and, and you can freely download the uh, manuals that I talk about and such. Um, and uh, um, all, it, all it takes is you joining and putting in your email address so I have a way to get a hold of you. Um, but please, please do that. And again, thank you very much for watching.